Welcome to my review of the 75386 LEGO Star Wars Paz Vizsla and Moff Gideon Battle. Released in the year 2024, this set comes with 289 pieces, 4 minifigures, and 1 build. The first minifigure up here is Paz Vizsla. Now compared to the last version of we got of him, there's a few differences, but it's mostly the same. Looking at them dead on, you can tell the helmet print on the newer one is a bit better, just being a little bit more lined up. I Something I noticed, just a bit more crisp, you know? I think the new helmet looks better, as well as the new helmet has printing on the side, and the other difference being that there is no 1x2 clip attached to the jetpack for the gun. Outside of that, the torso, legs, and chest plate are the exact same, and as with most Mandalorian minifigures, there is no face underneath, it's just a black head. Now the weapon he carries is a bit interesting. It's different from the last one, I think it's a cool small little build. And obviously, it's accurate to what he was carrying in those final episodes of Mandalorian Season 3. All around, I think it's a great figure. The next minifigure we have up here is Moff Gideon. Now, this is obviously in his Mandalorian armor from the ending of Season 3. Now, obviously, the main complaint people are having with this figure is that he has no cape. Now, if we had turn the figure around here, he does have his jetpack. And that is why he doesn't have a cape, because with LEGO minifigures, they, only, they usually only do one neck is neck attachment, they usually wouldn't do a cape and a jetpack. Which is why in the past we, we got Mandalorian figures, whether it be two versions, one with the cape and one with the jetpack. There's also a hairpiece included that you can attach to the head underneath the helmet, in which when you do, you get Gustavo. But you can call me Gus. And yes, he does have a second facial expression for those of you who are wondering. Focusing on that jetpack again, it does have a one by one printed tile attached to it. One thing I'll point out that is pretty nice is the helmet. Now, when images of this set leaked, I thought the I and many others thought that this was going to be the exact same helmet as the Mandalorian armor and the Darth Maul commandos that we got in 2021. But alas, here he is with a brand new helmet mold, in which I do think it looks very great. I think it's a great minifigure, but just the lack of no accessory does kind of drag the minifigure down for me a little bit. I feel like an accessory would have been nice for him. I'm not too bummed out about the cape thing, um, but it, it would have been nice to see him, him have some sort of accessory. Just having nothing seems a little lame. Last up here, we have the Imperial Praetorian Guards, and well, like, the new helmet's cool. It does look a little weird, but I think it's cool. Torso is fine, but just the legs aren't it. They, I don't think the the legs work with this. I feel like the skirt piece, which they used on the previous Praetorian Guards, or even just a waist cape would have been a little bit better than just regular legs. It, it doesn't fit. I think the weapons are pretty cool, and the helmets are pretty cool outside of that. I don't know. Oh yeah, for those of you who are wondering, underneath there are two, there, not two, there are red heads instead of the normal black ones we find underneath, which I think works really good as it blends the head and the helmet together when you're looking from the behind. You can't really see it that well, but there's just, there's very little gap, but in the gap that you can see, it does fill it pretty well, not just have a random color underneath there. I bumped the tripod. Now, I think the build of this set is pretty great. Now, this is obviously the gate to the Imperial base. I think it's an okay build. My one complaint, one complaint, is with the door. So, if we flip the build around to the back, you'll see that there's a little mixel joint knob here sticking out from the top of the door. And this is obviously so you can pull the door up and open. And back here, there is a little mechanism to help hold the door up. My complaint? The, co the mechanism isn't needed. <laughs> now I don't know why, but something about the friction with these pieces, the door holds itself up, and the play feature where you remove, lifting this knob is supposed to drop the door doesn't work. You have to like, push it. You have to push it down yourself. It just, it's not a great, it, what could be a great play feature is ruined by friction. Moving along, around on the left or right, depending on which side of the build you're looking at, to the door, we have a little cavern in here right below the turret. Not much in here, but there is a small computer screen. 
And on the screen, we have some Orbesh, as well as the Imperial Light Cruiser, which was in the scene on in Mandalorian Season 3. Looking to build along here, we just have we have one of the rock pieces, as well as we have a crate right here. And if we remove the crate here, um, you'll find a thermal detonator inside, like the one from the battle pack. At the top here, we have two 1x6 tiles with stickers on them, representing some lights. And while it's kind of hard to see on camera, um, and also underneath here, there's lights on these wedge pieces underneath the, not underneath, right in front of the door. Now, my main issue I have with them is that the, the, they're just, the, the stickers are just the complete wrong color. I'm sorry. If, let me try and pull this out. So I don't know how, how well you can see that there. But the gray of the sticker just does not match the piece. It is just like, it just looks yellowed. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just my sticker sheet or if it's this way in all Lego sets. I don't know. Um, now I gotta surgically put this thing back in here. Okay, that was easier than I thought. Right here we have a one by two printed tile just for the control panel. And off to the side here, we have a light. Then coming back around to the other side, we have the turret on top of the build. This can spin in all directions, full 360, and has a spot for you to sit your minifigure. At the front here, we have a 2x2 two two jumper in which you can put your Paz Wizla figure and have him fighting off against the Praetorian Guards. Now, by far, one of the cooler features of this set is right here and here which are spots for you to attach this to its companion set, which is the battle pack, which is shown in the back of the instruction manual. I will have a separate video out coming out soon, I hope, where I'll be doing different combinations between the two sets. For $40, is this set worth its money? No. I feel like it's a bit overpriced at $40. I feel like maybe $30, $35 at max would have been the great price range for this set. I feel like at $40 doesn't quite fully meet my expectations and criteria. Regardless, I still think it's a very cool set, getting three new exclusive minifigures in the set, and obviously a up updated version of a previous one. All around, I liked the set, just it feels a little overpriced for me. I'll give it an eight out of 10. So that is my review of the 75386 LEGO Star Wars, Paz Vizsla, and Moff Gideon Battle. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're around here. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And until next time, bye.